हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स डीजे गणित टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट न्यू टॉपिक व्हिच इज नोन एज फोरियर इंटीग्रल वी हैव सीन अबाउट फोरियर सीरीज इन मैथमेटिक्स वन कोर्स एंड इफ यू रिकॉल वी हैव सम लिमिटेशंस फॉर एक्सपांडिंग आवर फंक्शन एज ए फोरियर सीरीज वी नो दैट इफ आवर फंक्शन एफ एक्स इज पीरियोडिक then only we can write our fx as a fourier series now suppose we have a non periodic function then we cannot express our function fx which is non periodic as a fourier series but for non periodic functions we have another representation which is known as fourier integral if our function is non periodic but if it satisfies certain conditions then we can represent our function fx in terms of fourier integral so now we are going to discuss what is fourier integral of function fx so suppose i am given some function fx then i will find out these two quantities suppose i have given f of x and i integrate this function fx after multiplying it with cosine function i am considering another variable denoted by omega so i multiply given function fx with cos omega x and uh, here you can see i have two variables x and omega and i am integrating this with respect to x so after integrating this product with respect to x i will put x x limits limits of x will be put after integration so whatever quantity we will have that will be a function of another variable omega and uh, we will multiply this integral by 1 over pi so whatever answer we will get for this integral will be a function of omega so suppose we denote that function of omega by a omega similarly we find out integral of function fx by multiplying it with sin function sin omega x dx we multiply this integral by 1 over pi and as in this case because we are integrating with respect to x and here we have two variables whatever answer we will get that will be in terms of omega that we denote by d omega so you can compare this uh, uh, product with fourier series if you recall uh, we have fourier series of periodic function fx as a0 by 2 plus sigma an cos nx plus dn sin nx so instead of nx instead of n i have taken omega here n is from 1 to infinity so this fourier integral formula can be derived from fourier series of fx but we are not going into the details of that theory uh, we are just interested in how to express our function fx in terms of fourier integral so to express our function fx in terms of fourier integral first we will decide these two functions of omega a omega equal to 1 over pi integral of fx times cos omega x from minus infinity to infinity with respect to x similarly b omega is 1 over pi integral of fx times sin omega x dx integral from minus infinity to infinity and after finding these two quantities uh, we will write integral from 0 to infinity uh, we multiply this a omega with cos omega x as in the case of fourier series we are multiplying a n with cos n x and b n with sin n x similarly we multiply b omega with sin omega x and uh, this is fourier integral of fx so if we Uh, want to get our answer in terms of x here we have to integrate with respect to omega so whatever answer will be there that will be a 
function of x so fx equal to integral 0 to infinity a omega cos omega x plus b omega sin omega x here integral is with respect to omega here we are multiplying fx with cos omega x and we integrate with respect to x because here we require function of omega so in these two formulas of a omega and b omega integral is with respect to x and in the fourier integral formula integral is with respect to omega so this integral is known as fourier integral of given function fx it is called fourier integral of function fx now the question is whether for every value of x this function fx and value of fourier integral at that point x are same or not so answer is not always yes these two are equal value of function f at point x and value of fourier integral at point x these two are equal at those points x at which fx is continuous the point x at which function fx is continuous this equality holds and the points at which function is discontinuous suppose our function fx is discontinuous at some point say c if fx is discontinuous at some point c then in that case this is not equal to f of c but this is equal to average of right hand limit of fx as x tending to c and left hand limit of fx as x approaching c if our function fx is discontinuous at some point c then at that point the value of fourier integral is equal to average of right hand limit and left hand limit of function fx at point c so remember this uh, result it is very important result which is known as fourier integral theorem fourier integral theorem says that fourier integral of fx is equal to fx at every point x where fx is continuous and the point c at which fx is not continuous value of fourier integral equal to left hand limit plus right hand limit divided by 2 or in other words average of right hand limit and left hand limit of function fx at point c where function fx is discontinuous so in our course we will be given some function fx and we will be asked to find out fourier integral representation of given function fx so first we have to obtain these two quantities a omega and b omega then we have to uh, evaluate we have to write down a omega and b omega in this integral so this integral is required for your integral representation so first we have to decide or we have to find out these two functions a omega and b omega using these two integrals and then we have to simply put these functions in this fourier integral formula and we will keep this integral as it is we don't have to integrate this with respect to omega because we want to express fx as a fourier integral so our answer must be in terms of integral so don't evaluate or find out value of this integral you just substitute a omega and b omega in this uh, fourier integral formula and you will obtain your fourier integral representation and sometimes if your function is discontinuous at some point then we will write at those points of discontinuity value of fourier integral is average of right hand limit and left hand limit in short this equality holds at those points x where function f is continuous so i have written all these things systematically they can ask you to uh, define fourier integral so you should write in this way let f be a given function 
let a omega equal to 1 over pi integral from minus infinity to infinity of fx cos omega x here integral is with respect to x if here we have omega integral is with respect to x if we have x here integral is with respect to omega and suppose b omega is 1 over pi integral of fx multiplied with sin omega x dx integral from minus infinity to infinity then the integral a omega cos omega x plus b omega sin omega x here i have written d omega because my answer must be in terms of x so this is fourier integral of fx therefore variable of integration is omega and integral has limits 0 to infinity be careful here limits are from minus infinity to infinity for a omega and b omega and in the fourier integral limits are from 0 to infinity and this integral is known as fourier integral of f and this is the sufficient conditions for existence of fourier integral which is known as fourier integral theorem we are not going into the details but we will just take a look at this theorem sometimes they can ask you to write down fourier integral theorem so requirement is these are the sufficient conditions for function uh, for the representation of fourier integral suppose fx is piecewise continuous in every finite interval piecewise continuous means it is discontinuous at finite number of points like this suppose i have this function suppose function is uh, undefined at this point after that value of function is say from this function is undefined at this point so this type of function which is having finite number of discontinuities is called piecewise continuous that is it is continuous in some intervals in this interval it is continuous now there is a break here it is continuous in between these two points then here it is discontinuous but it is continuous in this interval so suppose i have some interval a to b then i can say that i can write down this interval a b as union of some finite number of intervals such that function fx is continuous in each of these intervals so this uh, type of function is called piecewise continuous and it has a right hand derivative and left hand derivative at every point that is function is smooth in each of these intervals that is there is no sharp corner in these intervals in the graph of function so function is smooth in this interval similarly function is smooth in this interval so it has a right hand and left hand derivative at every point and another requirement is integral of mode fx dx from minus infinity to infinity is convergent this improper integral is convergent so if these conditions hold then fourier integral of fx converges to fx at every point x where fx is continuous that means we can write fx equal to this integral at every point x where function fx is continuous and the point c at which fx is discontinuous the fourier integral of fx converges to average of right hand limit and left hand limit of fx at that point so if function is discontinuous at some point c then value of this fourier integral is limit of fx as x tending to c plus plus limit of fx as x tending to c minus divided by 2 so if our function is discontinuous at some point c then this fourier integral converges to this average of right hand and left hand limits so remember this uh, result fourier integral theorem and uh, in your examination you will be given some function fx 
and you will be asked to find out Fourier integral of fx. So Fourier integral of fx is given by integral from 0 to infinity a omega cos omega x similarly in the addition b omega sin omega x integral is with respect to omega and a omega is given by remember these three formulas 1 over pi minus infinity to infinity fx multiplied with cos omega x and here we have omega so integral is with respect to x same formula for b omega here function of x is multiplied with sine function limits of integration are from minus infinity to infinity for a omega and b omega sine omega x because we are we require function of omega integral is with respect to x here integral is with respect to x limits of integration are from minus infinity to infinity here we require function of x therefore integral is with respect to omega limits of integration are from 0 to infinity and be careful we will evaluate these two integrals or we will find out these two integrals as a function of omega and then we will substitute values of a omega and b omega in this uh, Fourier integral formula but we will not evaluate this integral okay, because we require our answer in terms of Fourier integral we want to express our function fx as a Fourier integral so never evaluate this Fourier integral you can just put values of a omega and b omega and you can simplify this function or you can write this uh, function in some nice form if it is possible otherwise never integrate here with respect to omega keep it as it is and here you have to integrate with respect to x then only you will be able to get functions of omega which are a omega and b omega so this is all about this session we have discussed how to obtain Fourier integral of fx in next lecture we will see some examples of uh, getting Fourier integral of given function fx so thanks for watching